this November will be the first time Lonnie White and Rukia Garbo will be old enough to vote in the presidential election. And just the second time, Malik Kuhl and Mosin Shara will cast a presidential ballot. None are planning to vote for Joe Biden or Donald Trump. If I were to vote tomorrow, I wouldn't vote, period. Ideally, I would like to vote third party. I will vote for an independent candidate. I'm considering either voting for Claudia de la Cruz or Cornell West at this point. If there is no substantive policy change when it comes to the genocide in Gaza, then there's, there's not really a, a discussion for me. When we met at this barbecue restaurant in Atlanta, all four told me they were raised and originally registered as Democrats. But this year, the president's handling of the Israel-Gaza war has turned them away. I think what Biden has done in aiding and abetting a genocide is just something I cannot stand for. You're willing to withhold your vote in the presidential election unless there is a ceasefire. Yes. And it's implemented. Yes. Not voting could mean Donald Trump gets into office. Do you think he'll be better on Gaza? Trump would probably say flatten Gaza and make it into a golf course. I have absolutely no faith in him. Would you not say that also the people who are not voting for one of the two people who are the likely people to really be in this race have a role to play in kind of giving the race to Donald Trump uh, in a state like Georgia where it's going to be like razor thin? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll do you one better, actually. I think that just means that's why the Democrats should listen. Exactly. <laughs> radical and more tapped in than their peers is how the group describes themselves. Rokia even helping to organize this demonstration in Atlanta last October, calling for peace and aid for the Palestinian people. While they don't speak for the majority of black voters, their dissent poses a real concern for Democrats in battleground states like Georgia, where Biden won by fewer than 12,000 votes. Black voters under age 30 made up only about 6% of voters in Georgia in 2020. That group voted for Joe Biden by more than 50 points. We are holding their election in the palm of our hands and they're not listening. We're tired of just hearing him say these things, these empty promises. We have no trust in Joe Biden. The Republican Party isn't earning their vote either. Both sides are just equal. Yeah, both, yeah. all, um, nothing is being done for us. If enough people vote third party, we can win. That's my thoughts. President Biden's campaign has touted his success on key issues affecting young voters, including student loan forgiveness, lowering unemployment and tackling inflation. Still, though, I don't feel it. People may be employed, but can they survive off of it? The federal minimum wage has stayed the same since 2009. I was five in 2009. I'm 20 years old now. Right? I work at Goodwill now for $12 an hour. <laughs> and, and cost of living keeps increasing, especially here. What could President Biden do to change your mind as far as how you'll vote? You guys see how and exactly why you will never see young, engaged, Black revolutionary mind people on CNN. You guys see how easily they dismantle that anchor? The PMC scum that sell us out. The, the, the Black people you see on CNN, the older PMC class, they are completely removed from our communities. The And I will even say the, the general suburban Black boomer establishment is completely removed for, from us. There's been a rebellion against uh, the Democrat Party in our generation for years now, for years. And they try to sell us this idea that we should support genocide because of Trump. Fam, I said this many times before. There's not one thing that Donald Trump has done that is worse than Joe Biden cutting wow. aid from UNRWA in the middle of a famine using torture or tame confessions. Tell me one thing Trump did that, that was worse than that. And that is just one out of many sins from the Biden administration. If you're willing to vote for that guy because of Trump derangement syndrome, not only do you have no principles, you're a danger to humanity. And if, if you're Arab American and you, and you vote for this person, what the hell is wrong with you? I'll say the same thing to any black, and I have person, any yeah. black person voting for Jim Crow Joe. If you're an Arab American voting for genocide Joe, you must have no self-respect, no, self, no love for your community. I don't want to go on the unplanned. Uh, no, no, I, 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 I did. Uh, for, for whatever reason, I, I, I truly believe that Scott was gonna be like five minutes late because I was watching the stream on the Carl uh, Zasso. Yeah, let's get but Scott just in. like let's a military in. man, he's here on time. That's the only reason why I played this video because I didn't 
get your reaction yet. And I was like, this is a base freaking segment. I wonder if Nick has seen this because this, this is a sort of, when you say the era of anti-intellectualism is over, you see it in these kids right here where they're batting down, not with just like, because she said, oh, you want to tell me about um, unemployment rate? Yeah, that's good. Can they survive on those jobs they have with this low unemployment rate? She pointed out. That's telling me like, these aren't just kids that are surface level with these issues. That's why yeah. the the propaganda you see on corporate media about the protest is not going to do anything. The people that's on the streets are the most uh, intellectually yeah. invested, have to know the most about the issue. And you're not going to, you're not going to change that. Now, Nick, I stopped the video before they answer the question. I'm going to put that video back up, but I think you wanted to say something else. Before I just one more quick, just one more quick point I want to make. And before we move on, uh, don't buy these liberals trying to pretend that Trump is the worst thing ever. They don't, pretend, they don't believe that. Remember Trump was in their social club. He got a TV show. He used to be friends with Joe Scarborough and the liberal class and Hillary Clinton. They are not scared of them. They just want to win power. So if Donald Trump was this unique threat, like they tell us that he is, seeing that people are rebelling because of the genocide in Gaza, wouldn't that be an excuse for you guys to end your support for Israel? Then yeah, we support Israel, but Donald Trump is such a big threat. Sorry, man, we got to win this election, bro. That right. what they would do if Trump was actually a threat. They don't actually believe it. So you shouldn't either. But let's go see. Uh, go ahead. I'll pass yeah, and, I'll, and, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in our guest because I think he has he has so he wants to chime in or will have a, a, an opinion on this too. But let's let's play this last part and then we'll bring in our guest, give him the proper introduction here. But let's bring in uh, or let's play this last part. It's about twenty seconds. Just listen to what she says here. In November, call for permanent ceasefire and actually implement it. I would like us to stop giving aid to Israel. If he doesn't get elected, that is his fault. That's not our fault. That's not the black voters here. That's not X, Y, and Z. No, it's it's on him. That part is what I wanted to make sure I played. Yeah. He's like, it's not on us. It's not. That's not how democracy works. And it and it's such a. You're not convincing those kids. 